All right, what's going on everyone? John here with Feldman. We've got Ian, a special guest for today. Ian is a third year doctorate student up at Marist in their uh, PT pro DPT program. He's been with me now, this is actually his last week, so it's been a, a great 10 week rotation. So um, past videos, you've, you've seen him behind the scenes uh, filming for me. So today uh, we're actually gonna let him steal the show. Um, you know, he's, a, he's also an excellent runner um, and has a, a passion for the, uh, the sport and the topic. So we're gonna talk a little bit about detraining. Uh, and if you actually read a couple weeks ago, I had a post on uh, you know how to plan your proper race taper. Your race taper is, is a planned change in training volume and you know what that means for you when you start to lose fitness versus when do you kind of prime yourself and, and keep yourself ready to peak and race and compete. A detraining concept is more of those unplanned uh, you know or forced rest periods and you know what does that mean for your body and when you start to lose fitness, you know, what does it mean in the long run, you know, yada yada, all that good stuff. So, um, you know, I'm going to kind of let Ian, Ian take this one away. And, you know, he was uh, gracious enough to, to write the topic and write the post, uh, so he put the research in and uh, kind of tag, you're in, man. Okay, so um, again, so with detraining, what we're ending up talking about is a, a period of where you had a forced, you know, hiatus from your activity. Could have been a vacation, which would be nice and favorable. It could have been a really busy work schedule. Um, as we're coming back up to the fall and schedules start picking up again, something where you couldn't keep up with your activity. It could be running, biking. It could be a, it could be soccer. It could be basketball, a sport. Um, it could be karate. Okay, something where you know since you have a force less from that activity. activity um, primarily, we're going to be talking about more so like an aerobic standpoint of running, biking, cycling, swimming. Um, and looking at what ends up happening with, say, aerobic fitness after that time span of time off. So, what we typically see with fitness changing is aerobic fitness will decline if you have a time off from your activity of greater than two weeks. What we really see is not a lot, but two to four percent of a decrease of your aerobic fitness will occur if you have two weeks off of that activity. And then, of course, studies have taken that, and they've taken it longer and longer and pushed it further and further out. And more or less what it comes down to is you see that relatively that same 2% for every other additional week. So if it's now three weeks you haven't been able to do something, then you're, you're down about 6% of in terms of what your baseline aerobic fitness was. If it's been a month or four weeks, you're down at 8%. So on and so forth, which could sound really bad if you, this is a, a long vacation, you have something going on in your life that's not allowing you to get back into that routine. COVID. COVID, yeah, <laughs> yeah a pandemic might do that to you. Um, but if, for instance, though, what ends up happening, what I do see is it does stabilize. So um, what they looked at with some studies is they had people, in essence, where they couldn't do anything. That sounds pretty bad. For about three months, so about 12 weeks. And now, so if you kept losing that 2% every week, every, in essence, every additional week after that, it would be a, in essence, you'd be going downhill, downhill, downhill. But it does, what it was shown to is was sort of stabilized at around about 16 to 20%. Okay, so that's an arbitrary number. Um, the main takeaway with that though is, is even if you had something, this is again, people who had three months off of not being able to do anything, which could be from an injury, right? Like you could have an injury, that could be something that's stopping you from doing that specific activity. Um, it does baseline, it comes down and it will plateau. And what's good to see is these people will, you know, athletes who they use in these studies, people who had previous activities. So say if you were a runner, you had something that had happened to you that was an injury, stopped you from running even for numerous months at a time, that baseline, it was a 20% detriment that they had from the top level, but it was still much higher than what an average person would be as if they hadn't done any exercise, okay? So if, you know, even with, uh, this, with that time off, even you're still going to be better than where you were before you even started all your exercise and all you have. So you will never leave out necessarily down to that very much, you know, zero percentage, whatever that would be for aerobic fitness, right? But you would always have some additional benefit from having done that previous training. So sometimes that's a, that's a good kind of idea to have in mind when we're weighing these kind of concerns in our mind of, hey, I'm injured or I've got something going on, I can't get my training and am I gonna be starting back from ground zero? kind of going forward, what am I going to be building on? Um, you will have that high fitness level, which is better than this is if yeah, you haven't done anything at all. So Yeah, and I, I think that's probably most people's biggest concern is, you know, how much fitness am I going to lose? And yeah. I'm doomed and all that work I've put in for the past X amount of months or X amount of years, 
Um, it's just not the case, you know, and you know, obviously we like to say that because it sounds good, but listen, it's backed up by science too. Yeah. Um, you know, they've done the study. So you're, you're never going to, you know, go completely back to, um, you know, to like Ian said, prior to, uh, you know, to your, your startup training. And I also think it's good because, you know, you, you mentioned that, you know, like a three month mark, you know, four month mark, things like that. If, if you've just not done something, we've all found ourselves in those situations before, whether it's a change in job, you know, schooling, um, you're moving around, the, like Ian's a student right now, you know, I remember when I was a student, we were bouncing back and forth, um, you know, different towns, some people go to different states all over the country, and it's tough to get into a rhythm and a routine, and you, and you lose that, and once you lose it, you know, I, at least I know for me, um, it's just my personality, it's really tough for me to get back into, into a routine. I know some people are good at doing the bare minimum, but if I have a lot of stress in my life and I have a lot of balls in the air, um, I'm one of those people that needs to kind of put that on the back burner and focus on everything else, before I get back in the right mindset yeah. to do it. And then, you know, before you know it, you know, a couple months have already passed, um, you know, weeks go by like that. Yeah. So, um, you know, but, you know, the saving grace is, you know, that insurance policy where you, you can at least reassure yourself that, listen, yeah, I'm not gonna be where I was, you know, you know, three months ago, but I'm also, you know, I can deal with maybe a 10 to 15% loss, even a 20% loss, because I'm not getting a paycheck from this. And so I know once I get back into it, I'll just climb back up that ladder. So, yeah. you know, at least knowing, um, you know, that I'm not going to fall all the way back is, you know, there's peace of mind there. I find solace in that. Yeah. And I think that the other point of too is as what, what they've shown then too, as you start to come back, so say as you, things calm down, as you get settled back in, um, fitness gains, they, they do eat on, as long as you can get back into, you know, some assemblage of routine and back into that training. So, so you get a couple things figured out, you get back into figuring out, okay, you can make this happen a couple of days out of the week. Um, what they do show is, they, you can regain those fitness changes in about half the time it took, took you to lose them. Um, so if you've lost, you know, maybe 10% over about a five to six week time period, you'll regain that in about a three week time period, as long as you can get back to consistent training. Um, and I think from our perspective too, looking at injury management, what's really important here is making sure whatever routine you get back into, making sure it's something that's sustainable for you. So this would be a case where, hey, I've been out for eight weeks, I don't want to get right back up to where my training was eight weeks ago. It does need to be a slow, deliberate build where you can then gradually introduce activities and don't, you shouldn't be stressed out thinking I've got to get right back to everything. That's kind of a like situation for an injury to a colon. Um, this is be coming back into a lot of overload um, that your body could handle at one point, but you still need to get it back up to that point. The, the, the takeaway kind of knowledge to kind of help calm yourself down is it'll come back sooner you just need to be patient with it. Yeah. Just add on small steps at a time to let that come back. But it should be coming back relatively well in about half the time that it took you to lose that, those fitness gains, um, because you have that faint fitness uh, from your previous training. Yeah, I mean, it, this just and, you know, ends up being a, a numbers game, right? Um, and if, in terms of a gamble, you know, like, you know how you go to a casino, you know, the house always has the, you know, the odds in their favor. You know, with something like this coming back from injury and detraining, the odds are in your favor. You know, if, yeah. if you, like you said, if you lost X amount over a certain period of time, you're going to gain that back in about half the time. Like, seriously, those odds are in your favor. I'll take that every day and, and twice on Saturday. So, um, you know, the, the other half of that is don't try and make up for lost time. You know, that's yeah. where you're ripe for injuries, like he said. It, it's just not worth it. Um, just focus on getting back to your normal routine consistency and then your fitness will come back. So in terms of those two things, um, you know, you wanting to maximize your training, well, you're gonna get it back in half the time and mitigating risk of injury. Well, if you try to make up for lost time, we can tell you that your risk of injury will go up. So yeah, I, again, I'll take both of those, um, you know, pieces of uh, advice to heart and just say, yeah, everything's in your favor coming back from this, so. Yeah, so, yeah, so takeaways all, detraining can happen. If you have a long period of time off, it will happen. You can come back from it just as quickly, if not quicker, than it took to lose those gains. Um, and there's a lot of other things that you can be doing in that time span too to walk on and take that time. Well, hey, if I'm not spending all that time on my activities, such as running or biking, I, you could be maybe also adding on some strength components there, and we're really kind of focusing on other things that kind of help get you back into that uh, that game in a bit more a better position. Kind of seeing seeing the the glass half full situation of that to come back coming back in a better position to Damn block straight. the hole, you know. <laughs> uh, so there it is, everyone. Uh, if you have any questions, again on the uh, you know detraining and and your fitness, and if you you've ever had some forced rest, um, you know, thrown your way, you know, we're sorry that sucks. We've all been there, but. Uh, yeah, rest assured, um, you know, the take home is that it's going to be okay. You know, um, you know, time is on your side, your fitness is on your side, um, and just really rely and appreciate all the work that you've done up until this point, everything that you've banked. So 
If you have any questions, uh, reach out to us, leave us some comments. Uh, we appreciate any likes and subscribes. You know, share this with your friends and your running communities. Uh, you know, we really, really appreciate the support from everybody thus far. Um, you know, we like uh, we like the rock and roll that we've been doing. So, um, this is John signing off. Ian, everybody, happy training.